It is an honor for us today to be with uh, Ron Finley. He is the founder of the Ron Finley Project, an artist and environmentalist, um, a disruptive guy that is just doing it in yes, yes, yes. So Ron, thank you so much for your time. And uh, just to begin with, right away, I see a lot of green around you. Please let us know what the project is about. Good morning. Or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever the, wherever you are. Right <laughs> Ross, now. Good, to to you. good morning. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Uh, actually, we're in my swimming pool right now. Uh huh. And, um, it's a. Uh, I've converted it into a green oasis, I guess you can say. Um, and we have mostly mostly um, edibles, but there's a lot of beautiful flowers and and. Um, and succulents and and cacti around and that's what that's um i want it to be like i don't know like i'm in a jungle that's what i wanted to have and I, I want people to know that you can design the life you want to live and not the one that's been designed for you it's just like you can design the space that you want to live in i mean ugly is beauty doesn't cost any more than ugly <laughs> It's what it what's the difference is the intent, you know, uh -huh. so our communities, a lot of times they're not designed beautifully and that that's kind of on purpose because if you're surrounded by that, what do you think is going to come out of that? Look at if you're surrounded by beauty and if you're surrounded by not so be much beauty. Ron, and when you say not surrounded by um, so much beauty, tell us a little bit about the area where you live and um why you started with the project well the, the, one of the basic reasons i started with the project was um the there's wasn't any kind of healthy food in the neighborhood that you could get and and i would just on autopilot just go out of the neighborhood to get food in in other neighborhoods that had healthy food and i one day i'm like why are it just hits you. Why are you driving to other neighborhoods to get food when there's thousands and thousands of people in your area that need food? And um, and then it just made you. It made me look at everything. Da 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 da. Real quick. Bam 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 bam. The things that you go through through life and why these places are designed like this. It's not. It's not by accident that underserved areas are underserved. They're underserved because they don't serve them. That's the only reason. And um, so that changed everything for me. You know, and one of the big moments was I went into a supermarket and I was looking at the tomatoes and they were beautiful and they were all uniform and the same. And it said, maybe coated with shellac for protection. And I'm like, wow, shellac. And it took me back to when I was in um, junior high school and, mm -hmm. and we used to put shellac on the wood. So that that's that's one of the, I'm like I don't need shellac on my food if it's edible or not. So that's one of the things, Caroline, that 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 changed. It you know it, little things happen and then there was this okay, I got to do this myself because it's not going to be done for me. Okay, so what is exactly what you do that benefits not only yourself but the community too? I show people how to be free. Gardens mm -hmm. equal freedom to me. I show people how to be healthy. That's that's a form of freedom that we don't look at as freedom. You know, I say growing your own food is like printing your own money. We don't see food as a resource, as a currency. The only thing that we've been trained throughout our whole lives is money is currency. Diamonds are currency. You can't eat diamonds, people. Okay, and I think this pandemic has shown you that. What's truly important to you? And um, so I show people how to be, be free. Bottom line is people say, oh, you you know, I said, no, I'm not growing food. I'm growing people. And then hopefully they'll grow some food and hopefully that'll carry on. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to show people that this life they're living, they didn't design it. Ron, and um, you've shown in, in several interviews, even a TED talk about um, South Central or how they change it afterwards, South uh, Los Angeles. Uh, not necessarily big yards, not necessarily a um, lot of money in the area. So what is the um, benefits or of not only inspiring the community, but making, making them participate into what they're doing? 
Well, you have to make somebody participate. I mean, the thing is to be self-reliant. That's what this whole thing is. You, If you're depending on someone to do something for you, you're enslaved by them. We're enslaved by these corporations. We're enslaved by these food uh, companies. And, and I tell people, it's like, we're all in the agriculture business. If you wear clothes, you're in the agriculture business. If you eat food, you're in the agriculture business. <laughs> you know, if you sleep on sheets, you're in the agriculture business. But we don't look at it like that. You know, and um, I, you got, see, the, the neighborhood's different now. I don't know if you guys are having this gentrification there um, where you're at, but we have gentrification where now properties, you know, in the hood are like, millions of dollars now um and um so it's not necessarily the hood anymore uh, but there's there's pockets where has you can be in south central and still have you know a million point five dollar house but then you can be you know two blocks from a house that's you know in ill repair so it's 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 different and then um, what what is the answer that you give those that would say, yeah, well, but you know what? Mine is a small apartment. I don't have any land of my own besides uh, my living room or whatever. How am I going to plant things there? And how do you convert public spaces into an option for them to? Well, well we, we have to do that collectively. You know, I, I tell people... You know, I've done, I've did a master class, and one of the big things I'm showing people in there, which I didn't think it was big until people start sending me pictures on Instagram of their dresser drawers. So I'm showing I'm going to take this dresser drawer and show you how to build it into a garden. Oh my God! I never knew people around the world are sending me pictures of their gardens that they put in these dresser drawers. And the whole thing is, if you want it, put it there. You know, if you have a balcony, if you have a windowsill grow something and then grow something collectively if you with your neighbors so if you have a lot petition for that lot you know in your neighborhood to be converted to a um a public garden and or just i didn't tell you this but take it over you know and then I, well it was vacant for 20 years so we decided to do something with it you know but you got to realize i think we forget that these politicians that we elect work for us we don't work for them and we we need to put them on to work on what truly works for us ron and i bet you've met a lot of people i bet a lot of uh, families have been very thankful for what you've been showing them for years now what um or could you share with us one of their stories or one of their experiences that really has meant a lot to you uh well there's a lot of them. I mean, there's one woman that's in the area. She wound up losing a um, hundred pounds, you know, from listening to what I was saying and seeing the garden she's in. And um, I got kids in India growing food, calling themselves gangster gardeners because the whole gangster part came not from violence and not from me being an ex gang member or nothing like that. It came from, um, that gardening is gangster. Let's change that vernacular. Let's change, let's flip what gangster truly means. Soil's gangster, air is gangster. You know, growing your own food, is that's gangster. Being educated on what life's principles are, that's gangster. So, I mean, and I have now, I have kids that understand that. So, um, uh, I've had stories all around the world, literally, that are touching that um, how this has changed people's life, how they brought their families together, you know, relationships with daughters and mothers that were strained and now they're gardening together. Uh, and it, I mean, it's beautiful to be, you know, a catalyst for change like that. Um, I never knew this was going to happen, Caroline. Never. I mean, I mean, who could, you know, some random black guy plants a garden on the street and then the next thing he, you know, he's, you know, affecting people around the world. He's traveling to Denmark, he's traveling to Greece, he's, you know, tra traveling to Brazil. Well, let's hope one day you'll travel to Chile after all this pass. You never <laughs> <travel>. <laughs> Ron, um, uh, just to uh, inspire those that are hearing us right now, there's always said that um, Chile, our long, thin country. It's kind of like the West Coast in the U.S., but upside down, where we have the desert in the north and the cold in the south. 
So mainly I want to think that South Central, right, Chile, it's kind of like the weather in, in, in California. Probably yours won't fluctuate so much like ours. We have winter and, and harsh winter usually. But for those that would say, well, again, I don't have space, you just told them your drawers. Um, for those that would say, well, but the sun doesn't shine here year, year round. Um, or we have cold weather at one point. What would you tell them? How would you inspire them? Well, chili feeds also is the one of the bread baskets of of the world when it comes to food. I mean, don't I mean, I've, I was in England and a lot. I saw food from Chile. You know, I mean, you guys have a climate that's very, very comparable. I would say damn near as good as ours. I, I, I'm here, so I can't really say that. <laughs> but um, there is no excuse. I mean, I don't see no excuse. Um, there's only opportunity, you know, and if it doesn't work, you try something else, which I, I tell people there are, you know, there are no mistakes. There's only lessons with this. It's like, do you, I'm a scientist, I'm a, but I'm also with, because of my gardens, I'm also like a sociologist now. Uh, I have proof of concept that if people grow food, they grow together. You know, if they, we grow, you grow community. And you can't grow, you can't eat all the food that you can grow, Caroline. It's, 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 it's impossible. You'd be eating all day. I mean, there's enough food for everybody. No one in no country anywhere should be hungry. or sh There should not be anything, um, what's that word? Starvation. <laughs> there should not be any starvation. You know, because we have we live on this fertile land that's alive. We live on a planet that everything that comes from this planet, the planet itself, we're alive, you know. And so we but we're not trained to look at it like that. Um, and that, that I want to train, train people or open people's eyes and their heads up and put plant these seeds in their mind that this is look at this beautiful place that we live on. I mean, the mountains are alive, the trees are alive, the soil is alive, the water is alive. It's, you know, but we take it for granted because you turn on your faucet and it comes out. We don't take, we don't take, um, we don't give respect or reverence to the, the single most important thing to everybody and everything on this planet. And that's air. Nobody even thinks of that. It's, you can't see it, but. It's the single most important thing on this planet. The same air that you're breathing is the same air that I'm breathing right now. Yeah. But we're, we're not taught like that. We're taught the, the only thing that really has value is money. And I want people to know, especially kids, you can't buy anything that's more valuable than you. <laughs> Things that do not give you value. That's what the Ron Finley Project is. Food is that much. <laughs> yeah. But waking people up and having them grow themselves that's what this project is about and it's about beauty and it's about art and, and it's, it's about taking your life into your own hands well ron um it's just so inspiring to hear you really i've been um just trying to chase you for a while now and i'm really? so thank I'm you yeah. <laughs> yeah um thank you so much for your time thank you so much for um all your wise uh words and uh let's just hope that we're gonna have more and more gangsters thank uh, yeah we need to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i got a bunch of them that i'm growing right now <laughs>